There has been a humanitarian crisis on our border with Mexico, as unaccompanied children from Central America have been crossing the border into the U.S. So far, around 52,000 unaccompanied children from Central America have crossed the border illegally this year, and that's according to the U.S. Customs and Border Patrol. Now, uh, studies released show that these children are fleeing increased violence in their home countries, places like El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras, which are currently suffering from high murder rates. They're not just coming here to places like Mexico, Belize, Panama, and Nicaragua. Now, most of these minors are actually girls under the age of 13 that are traveling alone. And, around a, a, and according to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, over half of them cited internal protection needs as their reason for their immigration. Because of this factor, the High Commissioner is hoping to convince both Mexican and American officials to classify these children as refugees and therefore not immediately deport them. Now, there's a legal basis for changing that classification, and it comes from the 1951 United Nations Refugee Convention, which the United States does follow. Uh, refugees, apparently, in this, uh, in this refugee convention, refugees were considered people who have a well-founded fear of being persecuted based on race, religion, nationality, membership of, polit of a particular social group or political opinion. The UNHCR argues that these children shouldn't be forcibly deported without access to proper asylum procedures. So, this is obviously a tough issue. These kids are going through a massively horrible time. And though they've broken our immigration laws. So I'm wondering, what does everybody think about this? What should we do and what do you think will happen? We'll start with you, Sean. The, the thing is, the way, the way that um, U.S. law works, I don't think that they can technically be classified as, as, as uh, refugees. They can be classified as something else, which basically means the same thing. But for, like, a legal issue, uh, refugees have to apply for um, citizen, um, citizenship from outside the country. And, like, they're basically seeking some form of asylum, and it's, like, called something like asylees. I know it sounds like a made-up word, but it's called something similar to that. I just can't remember it. But um, there's, like, a problem when you do that because we don't want, theoretically, more kids to cross the border because they took a dangerous route and a lot of them could die in the desert. So we don't want this to happen again. So, like, it's it's this weird issue where, like, you want to help the little kids and... Um, except for me because I don't like little kids. But you want to help the people who, who cross the border. You feel bad for them. And I, I would love to give them some form of asylum, but you don't want to send the signal to to Central America for parents to start sending their kids up because it's dangerous. So I hope they work out a way that they could like keep as many as like are in danger and we need, even though it's probably all of them, keep as many as we can help, and at the same time not signal people to send their kids on this disturbingly long trip. Which, by the way. Does anybody believe in America more than the people who will send their children unaccompanied to our border? Like, that's the most amazing thing about this story, and nobody talks about that. All right, Becca, what do you think? Well, and I would say um, amazing and also upsetting, disturbing. Um, I think we need some sort of completely unprecedented measure here because... I would argue, and this is opening up a completely different can of worms, um, but that we're directly responsible for the violence that's driving these children out of their homes. Decisions that we made, measures that we took that were ineffective, have created the war zones in Central and South America. Um, incidentally, because I don't have time to go through all of it here, I really, really recommend the Mesoamerican Working Group study Rethinking the Drug War in Central America, uh, in Central America and Mexico. It's a really good, really comprehensive study, and what they looked at, this was in January of this year that they published it, was militarization in those areas, direct relation to drug policy, violence against women in those areas, um, and forced migration as a result of the war on drugs, and it's our war on drugs, and its effect in Central America and South America, and essentially all of the things that these children are now saying, hey, this is what we're fleeing, these are the things that they were outlining as 
and carefully going through like the causes, um, current actions that are contributing to that even today, we need to rethink way more than just what to do with the kids that are already here. They need a special status because it's not just asylum and it's not just refu they're not just refugees. They're refugees from a situation we created. And part of dealing with them should be dealing with what we've already done. Not that we have a great track record on that, but... Right. Oh, and That's... get the back of those prisons. Like, they look horrible in the prisons. Like, it looks horrible that we have a bunch of little kids in what look like... I know they're, like, temporary establishments, but those look like prisons. Like, it, come on, Jeff. I know you see what I and, see. And there, there have been r reports of people that have been abused already by our agents in those in those holding those uh, I guess detention centers or whatever you want to call them it's horrible and, and and to the point of who would you know who would send their their kids uh, all the way you know from those Central American company or countries all the way up to here it's it's you have to be super desperate and back to you, you also have to have this is the problem that we created with our with our drug war, but you also have to have and, really and a lot of our intervention too. I, um, you also have to have really bad information because, like, uh, basically, what what I what, what one of the things that a lot of people are saying is that because somebody like decided to put to take Barack Obama's deferred action statement and somehow make a fake deadline that if you don't get to America by this time and pass these out, I think it, I, you know who I honestly think it was. The coyotes, because they're the ones who are making the money, bringing all these kids there. That are like, oh, you have to send your kids before the before like the fourth of August or the first of August, or else they, and they'll be able to stay in America. Like so, like they also have really bad information, and we just like that's that's the big issue. Is like if if we and by we I mean the government because I have no part in this. But if the government lets the kids stay right without some like amazing PR campaign sent back down to Central America, then that will send the signal that you should send your kids here. Because we're going to feel bad, and then we're going to keep them. But at the same time, like, I feel like a dick. If I, if I was the guy who had to deport these kids, I'd feel like an asshole. So I would, I would try my best to give them some form of asylum, but at the same time, I would message the hell that, uh, we can't keep your kids if you send them up. And also, Mexico total assholes because they they knew that these kids were coming up here and they didn't tell us. They gave them visas to pass through their country. So, that's our best friend at the south of the border. Yeah, it's 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 really, I mean, God, this is such a, a really sad situation. And of course, look at how our right wing is reacting to it. It's an invasion. It's Democrat voters coming to you know, Obama's bringing them up here so they can vote Democrat. Dude, that's insanity. Oh my God. Like, we need the. We do need to help these people. I mean, these are children. Like I know they they cross the border illegally, but they're they're children. Come on, you got you got to help them. Like, Actually, you do Jeff. Something. To be fair, they did interview um, a couple of the kids and say that, and they did say we were brought up here to commit in-person voter fraud. Oh, oh, is that is that what happened? Yeah. Ah, I see. But um, um yeah. Uh, the, also, but, but, like, hey, they'll self-deport though. Yeah, but also, it, it, by the way, the cause definitely is the drug war. It's El Salvador and all these countries that are like engulfed in drug violence. So, like, it's kind of our fault, but at the same time, it's like we're not no, fixing we're the drug war. I think we're to do to, to to help out with that. I think we're no, not. No, it, it is the it is the U.S. government's fault because. It's not only that we have a drug war, therefore these com countries emulate us. Is that we send them money and weapons to mil to further militarize their drug war, and that has consequences. So huge it's consequences. It's and yeah, we it's also empower situation. the drug gangs as well. You know those drug cartels. We empower them through the drug war, through making it illegal. Got to do something. We we have to make a change. Becca, do you have anything to add in? I really don't. I really do recommend that, that Meso-American Working Group study because it's really comprehensive and really does go through exactly how we've contributed with militarization and things like that. The problem when we get ourselves into these situations um, is 
how do you deal with the fact that your intervention completely ruined everything? Because any further thing you do is further intervention, and yet pulling out is it's it's not an option. Um, not really, not at this point. And now, I mean, in fair, like now it's coming to us. Now the problem is here, and I I don't see. I do want. I, to make sure that we're, you know, being clear that we're aware that we're using children in the legal sense, that a lot of these are teenagers, that teenagers sometimes make their own decisions. Now, that's not to say they're all teenagers by any means, but we are looking at, at a lot of teenagers, too. Um, but they're still here. They still don't... I don't see that sending them back as an option. Um, and yet I don't know what else we're going to do from a legal standpoint. Right. 